Hello and thank you for watching another R Gallery tutorial at the Data Digest. Today I will show you how you can create a box plot in R with ggplot and the geomboxplot function. Box plots can be a good way to summarize the shape of a distribution, showing its median, its spread and even skewedness and possible outliers. I will show you how to make a basic box plot, how to notch it a bit in the middle to make it look less bulky and easier to compare different distributions, and how to color the outliers in red. I will show an option to have the box plot width represent the sample size of the distribution, and we will touch on many other parameters to customize the colors of the box plots. One of which will be to include a special highlighting type. I will show three different ways to group box plots and a way to add the mean of the distribution as well. We can also add all of the points of the distribution either as jitter or with geom.plot. We can also add box plots to the margins of the plot and at the end we combine all of what we have learned in a final example. Feel free to jump to the sections you are most interested in. Timestamps are in the description below and also visible when you hover over the time bar of the video. As always, most of the examples come from the amazing R Graph Gallery by Jan Holz. There are many examples that are not based on ggplot, but show you how to do box plots with basic R functions. And as you can see, those can look really good and can be customized in many different ways as well. You can find the link to this website in the description below. If you already know exactly what each line of the box plot represents and how outliers are calculated, feel free to jump two minutes ahead. If not, then all of your questions will be answered with the following box plot theory detour. A box plot summarizes the distribution of a continuous variable. It displays the median, which is the second quartile, splitting the data into 50% below and 50% above. The first quartile includes the first 25% of the data and the third quartile includes 75% of the data. The interquartile range is half of the data represented by the box that spreads from the first to the third quartile. To calculate outliers, you multiply the interquartile range by 1.5 and add it to the third quartile to get maximum outliers and you subtract it from the first quartile to get minimum outliers. In a normal distribution, those usually represent less than 1% of the data and can be found roughly 2.7 standard deviations above or below the mean. Here's an example of how you can get these numbers in R. I simulate 1000 data points from a normal distribution of mean 0 and a standard deviation of 1. When you use set seed 3 as well, you get the same numbers as I do. And then we plot each data point from 1 to 1000 and we can add the box. With par mf row, you get two columns in one row to visualize plots in base R. So now this box represents 500 data points roughly, ranging from 0.67 to minus 0.67. And then we have a a rule to extend these whiskers from the box and a rule for the outliers that we will look into now in more detail. The summary function will give you the min, the max, the first, third and second quartile and the average. With basic indexing we can ask which value is bigger than minus 0.67 or smaller than plus 0.67 and we get roughly half of our data points fall within this range. The sum function is a quick way to add all of the truths because they are represented as ones and the false as zeros. So that's almost half of our 1000 data points. And when you look into the structure of the summary of the 1000 data points, you will find that it's six numeric values, this we knew before, and that they are named. So each number has a name attached, which will help us to extract it. You could also ask for the names directly with the names function. And now to calculate the interquartile range, we are only interested in the second and the fifth value of the summary, because the interquartile range is the difference between these two, which in our case is now 1.36. So that's the area spread for the box. We can also extract the fifth value of the summary by the name. So the third quartile is at 0.67. And to calculate the upper bound of the whisker for the box plot, we would have to multiply the interquartile range with 1.5 and add this to the third quartile. So now the whiskers would only be allowed to extend to 2.718. If we use the tail function we will see the last six values of the distribution and now I make a box plot where I zoom in to the upper tail of the distribution and now comes one important point. The whisker would extend to this value which is here but it will stop automatically at the last data point that we have in our distribution. So this 2.67 is the last point we have that's below the red line and when we add points with a jitter function we can see that here all of the data points fall and the box plot calculates outliers above the red line but only visualizes the whisker at the last point 
With the head function and the summary extracting the first quartile, we'll get similar values. So these are the lowest six data points of the distribution, and this would be the cutoff. So here I make another box plot, zooming into the lower range, adding a black line for the last value that's above the cutoff for the interquartile range rule to calculate outliers. And with points and jitter, we can add the actual values of the distribution, and we will see that there were actually two outliers roughly at the same spot. And here's the last value to which the whisker extends. The empty cars dataset is natively available in R. With the head function we see the first six entries. And now we want to plot the miles per gallon, so the mileage, distribution split by cars that have different numbers of cylinders. So some have four, six and eight and we will treat those as different factors. We put it on the x-axis and for y we will have the mileage. Within ggplot you have to specify the dataset, empty cars and the aesthetics mapping. And then you simply add the geom box plot function to get the following result. Another the way to do is is to pipe the data set into the ggplot function where you don't need the data argument anymore and then in the aesthetics mapping you simply put in the x and the y value because that's the order it expects to get first x then y and now for the fill argument you can specify a color you want to get like slate blue and with the alpha value you can adjust the opacity so make it a bit more transparent and with the xlab function you can specify the label you want to get to the x-axis if you want to have a color for different cylinders you can include the fill argument already in aesthetics mapping and hand over the cylinders as factors and then R will give you a different color for the different categories with a legend attached. But more of that later. For the next example we will use the MPG dataset that has a bit more entries than the empty cars and has a mileage for highway and city and different classes of cars which we can use for grouping. Let us now look at some of the geomboxplot arguments we can customize. Within geomboxplot you can set the color which will be the outline of the box plot and the whiskers extending. The fill represents the color inside the box and with alpha as mentioned you have the transparency ranging from 0 to 1 which means that if you make it 0 the color will be missing again and by default alpha is 1 which would then cover the lines in the background completely. If you set the notch argument to true you will get these little wedges at the median depending on the notch width this wedge will get smaller or bigger if you set it to 1 it will be the box again if you set it to 0 it will extend all the way to the middle and the idea behind Behind this is if the notches overlap then the distributions are similar if they don't overlap then they are distinctively different from one another we can customize the outliers by giving it an outlier color like red and an outlier shape by default it's 19 if we set this to 8 we get little stars we can also increase the outlier size with the outlier size argument and if you don't want to show the outliers at all you can set the shape to na as you can see, all the widths of the box plots are the same, but there is a way to have the widths of the box plot represent the sample size of the underlying distribution. For this, we create a dummy dataset with different sample size for each distribution. So distribution B will only have 5 data points, distribution D 100. We sample from a certain range of numeric values, different times, with replacement equals true. And then we have to specify within geom box plot that var width equals true. If you want to get rid of the legend as it's a bit redundant because all the groups are labeled on the x-axis already, you add theme legend position equals none. And if you want to add a custom label with a line break and a sample size specified in parentheses, you can create your own vector that pays the unique letters A to D with a line break and then start N with the different occurrences of each group. And then you add it with scale X discrete using the vector. Now we will talk briefly about different coloring options for the box plots. If you specify the fill argument already in the aesthetics mappings of the ggplot function, by default you will get the following colors for the different box plots. When I zoom in, you notice that we can also specify the color and the fill directly in the geomboxplot function. And here I also added an alpha value of 0.3 to make it a bit more see-through. If we add the scale fill brewer function from the color brewer R package, we can choose from a whole set of different preset palettes, for example, continuous palettes that go from blue to purple in this example. Or we can choose from a palette that has a different color for different categories like dark two that I chose here. And if you don't want to have the legend, you should specify the theme with legend position equals none. And then you can simply add the scale fill brewer function with a certain palette argument. And in case you wonder how you are able to put multiple different G plots next to each other, you can load the patchwork library and then save each plot under a certain variable. And then you can use these 
these characters to put the first two on top and then followed by the next two graphs. If you want to highlight only one box plot, you should make use of the following trick. You add a column to the data frame with mutate that you can call type and with if else you can look for a certain category like subcompact for class and if it's true you name it highlighted and if it's false it becomes normal and now if you plot class versus highway mileage and use fill equals type you will get only one highlighted box plot and the rest being normal so these are the default colors you can choose your own with the scale fill manual argument and then set the normal ones to gray and choose a hex code for the color you want for the highlighted one if you want to make the box plot see-through, you have to specify alpha again based on type so it expects two different alphas to be passed over and then you can manually set those with a higher value for the highlighted one making it less see-through and a lower value of alpha to make it more see-through and as always with seam legend position equals none you can get rid of the legend. To show different grouping options I created a dummy data frame with variety having the letters A to F and then for each letter you repeat high and low for treatment and then you add a value that has some random error assigned with the sample function so the data looks like this 20 times a high 20 times a low and then ever increasing values until f and if we plot the variety on x and the value on the y value the fill equals treatment argument will choose a different color for high and low we can also accomplish grouping with facet wrapping and there are two different ways to use it if we use treatment within facet wrap still having the variety on x and the value on y we would get a split by high and low treatment and if we facet wrap based on variety we get six different boxes from a to f and by default it will keep the x and y axis in a way that it includes all the values similarly for all different boxes and the first thing you want to do to fix this is set scales to free x so now it will assume only the relevant varieties within each box but it's still holding the y-axis constant for all different box and if you want to free this as well you just change scales to free and now you have individual y values for each box if you want to add an extra statistics to the box plot you can make use of the stat summary function if you run these two lines of code you will get the following box plot of the dummy data set and if you add stat summary with function y equals mean to get the average of the distribution and as geom you choose point that you can give a certain shape and size and color like yellow you will get the following plot so now a big yellow circle is added and if you want to get rid of the legend choose legend position equals none again you can as always choose a palette set from the scale fill brewer function and if you wonder how you actually add the whiskers to the line you can use the stat box plot function with geom error bar and the width decides between 0 and 1 how far these lines should extend. If you want to add the actual points of the distribution to the box plot you can simply add the geom point function after geom box plot but as you can see the points then are all on the same line overlapping each other hence it is better to use geom jitter instead of geom point where now the points vary on the x-axis. You can adjust the size of the points and the opacity. What I prefer is actually to plot the points first and then overlay them with the box plot with a certain alpha. So now the points are plotted first and then the box plot is put in second which means it's plotted on top and with alpha 0.5 you can still see the underlying distribution. And here you see one of the caveats of box plots if you have a bimodal distribution, then the simple box with the median will not necessarily give this away. You can watch my violin plot video to see another way to show bimodal distributions with a summary plot. Another useful alternative to show the points of the data could be the geom.plot function. So when jitter is too unorganized for you, you can use the geom.plot function that allows you to visualize the different points of the data in a more arranged way. There's a fun way to add a summary distribution visualization for a scatter plot. So now if you have the weight and the mileage plot with geom point with a different color for four, six and eight cylinders, you can save this object in P and then use the GG marginal function from the GG extra package where you specify type as box plot to add another plot in the margins of your scatter plot. Other types that are available in this function would be density, histogram, violin, and Densigram. Let us finish off with one final example where we put everything together. It's a dummy data set we used before with different sample sizes and a special line break label that we can use for the x-axis. And now we make use of the type 
trick again to highlight only one box with the if else function then we plot names on the x and value on the y axis and say fill equals type we start with the jitter first plug dots that are a bit see-through and we can limit the jitter with the width argument to have it a bit more arranged near the center line for the box plot we choose an alpha of 0.7 for all we set the var width argument to true so now the distribution b that only has 20 data points is a bit narrower than the d distribution we apply the notch argument and set the width to 0.4 the outlier color is red and the size is 2 and with scale fill manual we can use any color we want no legend again and a certain scale x discrete labeling from our vector and with this dot summary function we can apply the means of the distribution again with a diamond shape 23 certain size and color for the outline and the filling being dark green and green I hope that this wasn't too much information and that you learned something from this presentation so you can create beautiful box plots to visualize your data in the future by yourself. I hope I see you for the next tutorial here at the Data Digest.